turn again with me to the Gospel of John in chapter 15. Verses 1 through verse number 11. And I want to talk again from the subject, Lessons from the Vine. John chapter 15, commencing in verse number 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me... You can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye may bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples." As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Verse 11 reads, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Thank you. You may have your seats. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Lessons from the vine. In our early worship this morning, we discussed that The vine has to do with relationships. You have to be connected to the vine. You cannot do anything disconnected. And it is the devil's ardent task to always keep us disconnected. Keep us cut off from the life-giving vine. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. It's about relationships. And then it is about reproduction. That's the second lesson from the vine. The vine provides the energy wherewith the branch produces fruit. Everything God has created has a seed in it. And that seed is for reproduction. Everything God has made was made to produce its own kind. Wish I'd have help to preach right here. That 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 is the sin of same sex marriage. That is the sin against the Bible as it relates to marriage equality. Because a man and a man cannot reproduce its own kind. A woman and a woman are unfruitful. Talk back to me if you can. Uh, It's against God's divine order. 
a man and a woman reproduce. Uh, everything that God creates that's healthy reproduces its own kind. So being connected to the vine and bearing fruit. Because when you look at the progression of scripture, it talks first about no fruit, then fruit, then more fruit, then much fruit. No fruit, fruit, more fruit, much fruit. The longer you stay connected to the vine, the more fruit you produce. Come on, talk back to me if you can. Now, the third lesson from the vine is responsibility. I've never seen a fruit tree or any other fruit-bearing plant struggle to bring forth fruit of its own kind. The branches yield themselves to the will of the vine. The life flows to them from the vine and fruit just happens. Now, 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 how does the person abide in him? Because six times or more in that passage of scripture, the word keeps on saying, in him. Abide in him. If you abide in me and my word, abide in you. Abide in me. Abide in me. Well, you first have to be saved. Uh, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans says if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that's enough to save you. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believes unto righteousness. You cannot bear fruit in the vine apart from being born again. I need to remind us as I hurry that you can be in church and never be in Christ. I wish I had a witness here. You can be in a religion and never know Jesus Christ. I wish I had four or five more witnesses here. It's very easy to, to learn the language and and to learn the dress code and to learn the mores and the behaviors of people who come to church. But that doesn't have anything to do with salvation. Uh, you, you, have to, you have to stay connected through prayer. Stay connected through study of the word. Stay connected through meditating on the scriptures. Stay connected through praise and worship. Stay connected through total surrender. Now, brothers and sisters, that's painful for many of us because we have given God some parts of our lives and other parts of our lives we keep in secret. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. Uh, everybody in here got some stuff that we kind of keep in close to the vest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know your wife is in here and you can't shout like you want to. And I know your husband is here and you can't say amen like you should. But everybody in here got some little stuff in the corner. Uh, some little stuff hidden off on the side that God is working on. It's, it's, it's getting better, but, but we still struggling with that. Uh, I wish I had my 730 cry. Uh, there's still some problems we are struggling with. There are some, some youthful lusts. Amen. There's some pride. There's some ambition. There's some arrogance that we are trying to get rid of. And every once in a while it raises his head and God is not through with us yet. Uh, I, I know I'm not the only one in here. Uh, who's got some stuff he's trying to deal with? Uh, it's none of your business. Uh, it's none of your concern. You just pray for me. Uh, you pray for me. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Uh, all of us got some problems, some, some issue. But that does not mean I'm not connected to the vine. 
It just means every now and then I disconnect myself. Um, when, you, when, you, when you stay constant in prayer, when you study the word, when you meditate on the word, when you are present in worship and praising God and totally surrendered, God makes himself responsible. Now I want you to get this. The quality of the fruit is not the responsibility of the branch. The quantity of the fruit is not the responsibility of the branch. The branch just needs to stay connected to the vine. The vine determines quality and quantity. The vine determines the quality of the fruit. The branch only produces the life that comes from the vine. Uh, we are trying to reproduce in others what hadn't been born in us. We, we are trying to make people live up to a standard we can't live up to ourselves. Come on, help me preach just a minute. We are trying to turn folk into something that we are not yet. We are growing towards perfection. We are growing towards maturity. We are growing towards the perfect stature in Christ Jesus. We are not there yet, so don't expect folk to be where you are not. I'm not a... I'm not a fruit inspector. I'm not going around trying to inspect everybody's fruit and uh, find out what you're doing and find out the quality of your fruit and how much fruit is growing in your own life because everybody grows at a different level. Everybody is spiritually maturing at a different level. Everybody does not reach maturity at the same time. So we ought to be patient with folk who are not where we are because somebody had to be patient with us. Here, here, here as I hurry, is this relationship and reproduction and responsibility that pours into a reality. Now, this, this matter of the vine and the growth of fruit has to do with there are sometimes impediments that keep us from growing. Uh, when, a, when, a, when a gardener, when a person who, who grows plants uh, sees a branch that is producing fruit, they remove things from around it that sap it of strength and vitality. Uh, if, if you're growing an ivy in your house, uh, you'll pass by one day and see a dead leaf and uh, pull it out because it's there, but it's sapping vitality. You got to get it away from the green leaves or it'll take strength from the whole vine. I wish I had somebody to see where I'm trying to go. Uh, 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 things like sucker branches. Useless buds, misdirected shoots, diseased spots on the plant, discolored leaves. All of these things have to be removed if the plant is going to reproduce. Likewise, in the life of the believer, everything and everybody that saps you of strength and vitality need to be removed. There are some folks you just got to get out of your life. I wish I had help to preach here. There are some people you've got to excuse from your presence. Because you're on your way somewhere. And they are sapping you of energy. They are negative. They are mad. They are mean. They are ugly. Their disposition is down. And they never feel good. They never have anything good to say about anybody. Get rid of them. Uh, I, hope, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. There's a member of this church who is very funny. 
And I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. I don't want to turn around and look at her because she'll know that I'm talking about her. <laughs> uh, but she said <laughs> we were in a class in the young adult uh, workshop and I was teaching a class on divorce. And uh, she said she was uh, divorced and she's dating this guy and they went out to eat and uh, his credit card would not, <laughs> would, would not go through. And she said, well, maybe you ought to call the bank <laughs> and uh, see what the problem is. And uh, he said, well, my check doesn't clear until midnight tonight. <laughs> so she said, he sat there till midnight <laughs> uh, for his check to clear. <laughs> <laughs> and the, when, when, the, when midnight came he still had some problems so she went on and took care of it and she left and she said she's been, he's been calling her and, and every time he calls uh, on her phone she presses decline and uh, he finally caught up with her and she said uh, he said why didn't you have him you return my call he said I, just like your card was declined at the restaurant I press decline when I get your phone call. There are some people in your life you just got to press decline. Somebody ought to help me preach here. Some folk don't mean you're any good. They're not going anywhere. They are sapping you of vitality and strength and you've got to disconnect from them or you will never produce any fruit. See how quiet y'all got right there? Because you know for yourself that you've been around some folk who don't mean you no good. You've been in some relationships that have not produced any fruit in your life. But the Lord Jesus says this reality has to happen to everybody because every branch is affected. Every branch. I said every branch. Because there are some branches that are not bearing fruit. So he just cast them in the fire. But then the branches that are bearing fruit he purges them, he prunes them that they might bear more fruit. What I've, been trying, what I've been trying to get over to us is that in the life of the believer, it's a matter of purifying and pruning. Either God is purifying or he's pruning. Either God is putting some stuff in or taking some stuff out. You're going to help me close this, won't you? But as long as you allow God to prune you and to purify you, he will turn you into what he wants you to be. Uh, I, I'm not always pleased with the pruning process because pruning is painful. I wish I had some noise here. God turning me into Jesus is painful. Because I have to give up what I want. I have to give up what I desire. I have to give up having my way. I've got to give up my will taking first place. That's a painful undertaking. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? Because just when you get where you think you ought to be, God brings you down another step or two to make you realize you got there without his help. And whenever you get somewhere that God does not want you to be, there will never be contentment and satisfaction. But wherever you are now, if you are in Christ, that's a satisfying place to be. Because God knows when it's time to bless you. He can't always get you to the blessing because you're not ready spiritually to handle it. You're still arrogant. You're still ambitious. You're still proud. So God has to keep you in a holding pattern so he can bring you to where he wants you to be. You, you, ought, to, you ought to take some time every once in a while to talk with people who are satisfied being Christian. People who are satisfied where God has them. After a while, you start realizing you don't need a whole lot of folk to make it. 
you don't need to be surrounded by a whole lot of people for you to be successful. You're going to help me close this little sermon, won't you? Because if you abide in him and his word abide in you, God will keep you satisfied when everything around you is falling apart. God will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He'll keep you in Christ Jesus. He'll hold you, the Bible says, till your hair turns gray. He'll take you by the hand and stand you upright even when the enemy is trying to overwhelm you. I need some satisfied believer in here today who's been walking with the Lord for some time. You've gone through the pruning process. You've gone through the purifying process. God has brought some painful things in your life. But if you have the patience to wait on God, he may not come when you want him. But if you're patient, he will always be on time. I need two or three Bible readers here who will help me here when Isaiah says, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Father, the Creator of the ends of the earth, there's no searching of his understanding? I wish I had two or three more Bible readers. He gave his power to the faint. And to them that are weak, he increases their strength. The youth shall faint and grow weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. But you got to stay connected to the vine. That pruning process. I told the persons who were here in our early service that what I love about the pruning process is painful though it may be. The pruning fork is in God's hand. God doesn't trust anybody else to prune me. God does not put that instrument in anybody else's hands because some folk who don't like me will prune me too much. Some folk who want to see me down will be cutting on me when he ought to leave me alone. You ought to help me preach right here. You remember Jesus healed that blind man and he put some mud on his eyes and he said, what do you see? The man said, I see men like trees walking. And Jesus touched him again because you can't see people like trees walking. Because if you see them like trees, you'll start climbing on them. You'll start cutting them down. Come on, talk back to me here. You'll start doing things to them that you have no business doing. Your sight got to be right so you can treat people like people ought to be treated. I wish I had a witness right here. But I thank God I'm connected to the vine. I thank God that I know Jesus for myself. I don't need nobody to tell me give God a hand of praise. I don't need anybody to tell me to praise the Lord and give God a hand clap. When I start thinking about God's goodness. And how God kept me connected when I could have drifted away. Somebody here ought to have a testimony of how Satan tried to snatch you out of God's hand. But God kept you in the midst of your issues, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your stuff. You still got joy. That's what it says right in verse number 11, that your joy might be full. Have I got a witness here? And when you got real joy, he'll be with you in sickness. He'll be with you in times of distress. He'll be with you in the season of divorce. He'll be with you when your children are giving you trouble. He'll be with you when you don't have a job to go to. He'll be with you when your health starts to fail. He'll be with you when your eyes sight grows dim. He'll be with you when your hair turns gray. He'll be with you when your friends walk out on you. He'll be with you when the storm starts to rage in your life. He'll be with you when the wind starts blowing in your life. He'll be with you when you can't see which way to turn. He'll be with you when you don't have any money left. 
at the end of the month. He'll be with you when your husband dies. He'll be with you when you have to bury your child. He'll be with you when life turns on you. And then when your joy is full, you can come to the Lord's house in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your struggles, and still give God the praise because weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. The Lord will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. The Lord will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Is there anybody here connected to the vine? Is there anybody here reproducing fruit? Is there anybody here rejoicing in the Lord? Jesus, I love to call that name. Jesus died on a cross. But bright early Sunday morning, he arose from the dead. That gives me joy, unspeakable joy. If you got joy and you're not ashamed to testify, if he's been good to you and you don't care who's looking at you, if he's made a way for you and you don't mind being a witness, why don't you shake somebody's hand? Tell them I got joy, unspeakable. Joy, unspeakable. Joy, I know he's all right. Unless you are connected to the vine, you'll never know what the real Christian experience is. You'll go through the motions and you will go through the gestures and you will make noise because everybody else is making noise. But until you are connected to the vine, you will never understand what being a Christian is all about.